Hello, hello, happy Sunday everybody. It's uh, Katie Harney here with KOTrain.com and here again in my kitchen, la la la. Semi cleanish kitchen. Um, it's just me today. Um, Brian and the baby are down in the basement because he is, um, he's in a mood. He's in a mood today. <laughs> um, only took one nap, so he is downstairs. I'm sorry, no baby crashing today, but I have a lot of good, awesome stuff to share with you guys. Um, so I'm super on point for once today um, with my meal prep. So I want to share with you uh, a few things that I already made a little bit earlier today. And oh, my oven's ready. And I'm actually, perfect timing, I'm going to show you two of um, my favorite recipes that I'm going to make with you live here because they're so easy that I'm going to literally do them with like one hand because I need one hand to hold the camera here. Um, I'm really excited about sharing all this stuff with you guys. And, and if you like these recipes make sure that you stay tuned to us because in the very near future um, Brian and I are going to be sharing our 30-day challenge that's going to have recipes very similar to what I'm going to show you today clean eating um, you know low carb you're getting your carbs from good sources high protein good fats all that good stuff um, 30 days of that including my three-day detox and 30 days of workout so we're gonna have you covered for 30 days so stay tuned for that that is in the the near future so we'll, we'll tease for you um, okay so I'm gonna flip around here and this is just some of what I got going on right now so earlier today um, these are just um, roasted sweet potatoes so I bought these already cut up because I am super lazy these are basically, I just tossed them with some olive oil. I dumped it on the pan, threw some olive oil on there, and then threw a little sea salt, um, pepper, and then, what else did I use? Paprika, so really basic. And I roasted them at 400 for about uh, 25, 30 minutes and just tossed a few times in between. So what I'm gonna use these for, option one, this is just some chicken breast that I also baked right along with those sweet potatoes. Um, Brian is, I don't want to say basic, that's not the right word, but he is a simple man when it comes to his meal prep. He is good with just eating some chicken breast and, and a veggie. So these are his chicken breasts. Um, here's a great veggie that can go along with it. I also love using sweet potatoes in the morning. I think they're so good with like a poached egg or a fried egg. Mickey, you do not want to go outside. It's raining, bud. He doesn't like the rain. Mickey, don't even. Um, so that's that, and then this is actually for Andrew, so this is not for me, but these are noodles and peas, but the noodles, they're made from chickpeas, they're so cool. So I looked at the ingredients, and they're made from chickpea, chickpeas, uh, the pea protein, that xanthan gum is a, is a thickener, and you know, I don't love that, but as far as thickeners go, that's one of the better ones compared to like carrageenan. Um, so there's that, and then back here, I will not make these for you on camera just because I don't wanna, I don't wanna bore you to pieces, but these are going to be um, my egg cups. So I've got some chopped up red pepper and jalapeno. That is a little bit of my ground beef that I'm going to be using for my pizza spaghetti squash casserole that I'm gonna show you. And then I'm gonna whisk up about six eggs, and I'm gonna put them in my greased muffin tin here. So these are super, super easy. I make these all the time. Basically, you're gonna put you know, a little bit of your meat. Oh, there's my curling iron burn. A um, little bit of meat, a little bit of your um, peppers into, I think this will make about eight, um, into eight of your little um, muffin things here, and then just pour the eggs in, and it should reach about three-fourths of the way full. And then you bake these at um, 400 for about 20 minutes, so just when they start kind of rising up. Um, so I'm gonna be making those, but again, I won't make those with you now because my favorite thing is spaghetti squash, and mine looks really kind of sad right now. Um, let me flip back. Um, so I, I baked this earlier, like way earlier today, um, and I'll share with you how I did it in a second, but I let it like sit in the oven when I went to the grocery store, and then when I came home and took it out, it was like, Arr. but I think it's still okay. Um, but anyway. I have tried every single way to bake spaghetti squash, and I, I think I've shared this a couple times with you guys before, but my favorite way to do it is to, you literally just take a knife, this looks scary, I hope no one's like tuning in now, and I'm like, eh, <laughs> but you take a knife and you just kind of stab it all over so when you put it in the oven it doesn't explode, um, and then you bake it whole for 
this one I did, this is kind of a, on the larger side, I did for like a minute or an hour, no, a minute, an hour and about five minutes. Really big ones you've got to do closer to like an hour and 15. Smaller ones you can get away with um, a little under an hour, but they should be just softened. And on the bottom, you'll see it get that little bit of a burn mark. So that's kind of my, my gauge. But once it's cooked and once it's cooled enough to handle, these stay hot for quite a while. So um, let it sit before you try and cut it open. But once it's cooked, flip it over, start cutting it long ways. These are really hard to cut when they're not cooked. Um, so that's why I prefer doing it this way. But you cut through. Mm -hmm. And if you've never cooked a spaghetti squash before, the first time you do it, it's like magic. Because you cut it open. And you see, so inside, there's these seeds. They're kind of like pumpkin seeds. And what you gotta do is you gotta take the seeds out first. So I just use a fork just like that. Just kind of work them out, work them out. Oh, I might have overcooked this, no! Um, but you take your seeds out. I don't know if you guys can see there. So I'm gonna do that for both halves before I strand them, which is not a verb, but it is today. So I'm gonna take my seeds out of this side. And now, so like I said, I'm making this spaghetti squash pizza casserole. Pizza casserole. So you can use spaghetti squash for a million different things. But if it's your first time, this is the recipe that I really suggest. This is the recipe that I've gotten people that like hate vegetables to be like, oh, this is really, really good. It's kind of like my go-to um, recipe. So your first thing, and I recommend cooking your squash in the same 9x13 that you're going to make the casserole in. Because um, less dishes, duh always want less dishes so here's here's the magic so now you take your fork again and you just kind of like rub it in the spaghetti squash and you just pull the little strands apart I'm making such a mess here and then, oops and I forgot a seed get out of there you're not wanted but you can kind of see, and it's hard to see on camera here, but inside, oh my gosh, I'm missing all the seeds. Whoops. Um, you almost get these like noodle-like strands. It's so exciting the first time you do it. I remember the first time I made this, I was like, this is magic, oh my God. Um, so you're gonna get all of that squash out and you're gonna put it in your pan and now that I'm doing this, now that I realize that I left this in here so long, it definitely works better if you do it when it's like kind of, when it hasn't been sitting in your oven for two hours. Um, but you'll get all of that out. Mine's being kind of a pain on me right now. And with this recipe, I recommend using um, a squash on the larger side or two small ones. Um, and to me, a large squash is typically around four pounds. So I'm getting all that out there. Do the same thing on this guy. And you might have like super slimy on the outside for some reason. So. so this is why like most cooking shows they have everything made because this <laughs> shit takes longer than it was. Uh, or then you realize, there we go. Come on out. So once I get all this out, I have, I don't know if you can see over there, I have some ground beef that I already cooked. Um, I'm not crazy. I don't always like dwell too much on getting organic, but when it comes to my meat, um, I do, especially for beef, try to get organic grass fed. So if you have that in your budget, that's something I really recommend um, trying to stick with best you can. So got most of my squash out here. Scratch, scratch, scratch. This is my workout of the day, getting the squash out. Okay, so there's that. And then you just throw those away, obviously, when you're done. This really didn't make as much as I thought it would. Womp womp. Okay. But now you want to add in your ground beef. So I bought a pound. Part of it I'm using for those egg cups that I showed you before, and then part's going to be used for this. So just dump that in there. And then you want to get some pasta sauce. 
So you can be like a fancy person and make your own pasta sauce. I never do. Um, just make sure that when you buy your sauce, you find one that does not have any added sugar. Um, this is one thing that I talk about with my nutrition clients a lot because they get confused between you know, the sugar that's on the nutrition facts label and then the sugar in the ingredients. So this goes for anything um, that has natural sugar in it, which um, pasta sauce does because tomatoes have natural sugar in there. So I don't know if you can see, but on the nutrition label, I know everything's backwards, I'm sorry, um, but there are four grams of sugar. Um, and that sugar is from the tomatoes. Um, if you compare this four grams to a lot of other um, brands, you're gonna see like 10, 11 grams of sugar and it's because they've added sugar. How do you know if they've added sugar? You just need to look over in the ingredients and it will say. So it'll say, it might say organic sugar. or Sugar is sugar is sugar. Um, even if it's organic, even if it's labeled something like brown rice syrup, you know, one of the million fancy names they have for sugar. Um, that's what you want to look for. This brand in particular, I love um, Newman's Own Common Good. I don't think any of them have any added sugar. So that's the brand that I tend to stick with. But you take this jar whole shebang and dump that in there and then I usually give it a good mix at this point here and then your last step sounds gross but I promise it's necessary you've got three whisked eggs so I already whisked those back here and you pour it over and you're going to look at this if you make this and be like, Katie, this is disgusting. This is a soupy mess. Why are you having me do this? But the eggs are going to help um, hold it together. So a lot of casseroles that you like cut and take a slice of, they're that way because you're adding a ton of cheese in there. Um, so instead of using cheese, we're using egg. You do not taste the egg, I 100% promise. Um, but you want to kind of mix it in there, nice and good like that. You can top this with a little cheese if you want. Um, I am not today. Um, not because I'm super healthy, but because I forgot it at the grocery store. Um, usually I'll top it with a little bit of cheese and then some Italian seasoning. Um, but I've also made this without, and it's still very, very good. So this is all you gotta do. Mix, mix, mix. Again, it looks like a soupy, gross mess, but once this is all baked, I'm gonna post a picture, and you'll see how awesome it is. So I've got my oven already set to 400. I'm gonna put this in there. And this usually takes about um, 45 minutes to bake. So you'll see it kind of get brown and nice and crispy up on top. Um, this I find even better the next day. So this is one of my things to, uh, one of my favorite things to meal prep because um, not only does it retain its flavor the next day and not feel like soggy and gross like a lot of things do, but um, I almost like it better reheated. So this is a favorite of mine. So get my timer going here. 45 minutes and then I have one more thing to show you okay if you guys are interested in this recipe if you've ever tried it or want to try it give me some likes give me some loves um I would love to know um down the road if you try this too and if you like it um I swear this is the one thing that um I usually get a good review on so I'm gonna flip you around here to my second thing I'm making yeah oh, oh no I'm not oh see can you hear the baby down there oh Andrew so this over here, again, super easy. Um, this is a chicken stew. So I put this when I have um, my private nutrition clients. This is one thing I use a lot because it's, it's just so basic and so easy. Um, I've got some chicken thighs here, organic chicken thighs that I'm gonna just put in my crock pot. I've got a little over a pound here. You can use chicken breast as well. Um, I don't have a good reason for having chicken thighs today. I think I just, they were on sale. It's usually my reason for buying things. Yeah, on. And there's my last one there. So you got your chicken breasts. Um, you want to, you know, anywhere between a pound and a pound and a half. And then you've got some chopped carrots. So I've got, I think I have five kind of medium-ish sized carrots there. Um, and then this is broccoli. So this was frozen and I let it sit out to be um, kind of room temperature. But you could also use fresh broccoli. Broth in there. And then the last thing is about three cups of unsalted chicken stock. And that's about what I have left in here because the last time I used it, I used a cup. So I'm not I'm not always good at math, but when I am, it's in regards to meal prep. Dump, 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 dump. Hope I'm not making you dizzy, I'm sorry. 
And the last thing I'm going to do is just add some seasoning. And I need two hands for that because I have like a twisty salt thing. So hold on. I need my hands. So, okay. Hi. Hi. So got some that's not salt, that's pepper. Pepper! This is my pepper song. And you can either use sea salt or I use pink Himalayan salt. Do not use table salt. Um, it has been stripped of its natural nutrients. Um, Celtic sea salt, regular sea salt, Himalayan, pink salt um, have all the natural vitamins and minerals that salt from the earth actually has. So that's what I recommend. So I'm salting and then you can get kind of creative with your seasonings here. I've, I've done Italian seasoning, or this is um, this is just something I was given as a gift, Pinsley spices. Um, it's very similar to Italian seasoning here. Mickey, so I'm just gonna dump a bunch of that in there. And then I'm going to put the lid on. Do do, slow cook. And this you can do, I'm gonna do four hours on high because it's, what the heck time is it? Oh my gosh, it's already 522. I don't feel like staying up super late tonight, so I'm gonna do four hours on high, and that should do it. Um, and once that's done, um, you can go in there with a couple forks and just shred up that chicken, and it should be, you know, kind of like a nice thick stew. So I've only made this a couple times, and both times it turned out pretty good. Um, Again, it's nothing crazy or groundbreaking. Nothing I do is going to be crazy or groundbreaking because I am not a professional chef. I am, you know, I'm a mom. I'm a regular old chick like like you guys out there. So um, I try to keep it simple because that's all I know. Um, and for those of us that have um, busy lives, those of us that have kids, we we can't afford to, you know, spend a ton of time making these gourmet meals. That's why meal prep is so important. Um, and that's why eating clean is so important. You know, if you're able to meal prep and you're able to keep, um, keep most of your nutrition coming from these good, clean sources, um, Tiffany, amen. Amen, girl. I love it. I love it. Um, that's what's going to help keep you on track. Cause if you, I mean, and I know this from personal experience, if you don't meal prep and you want to eat healthy, it's very, very hard to do unless you have a personal chef or, you have a lot of time on your hands and you have that um, desire and will to make every meal from, from scratch. And if you do, that's great. If you have a personal chef, I am probably not gonna be of very much use to you. Um, but if you're like most of us that are, that are busy and just wanna live a healthy lifestyle, um, that's what I'm here to try and help you guys achieve. That's what I'm really passionate about. Um, and that's what I hope I can help you with. So, like I said in the beginning, stay tuned to us at kotrain.com here. We have really exciting things coming in the works. Um, one of those being our 30-day challenge. So it's going to be recipes just like this, really easy. Um, things that you can, you know, literally do with one hand except for putting in your seasoning. So that's what I did with most of this here. Um, give me some likes, some loves. I'm seeing some thumbs up. Where can you get the chickpea noodles? Hi, Cheryl. Um, I get them from my local grocery store. It's called Mariano. So I live in Chicago. Um, the brand is Bonza. I'll show you the, the box again here. So Bonza. Um, I, like I said, I go to my local grocery store and I'm like, stuck in my local grocery store don't go anywhere else because it has a bar in it which makes it the greatest place on earth um but i would you know maybe go on their website and look up where they where they sell it um i don't really eat it much myself but it's um really great for the little guy um i've got some peas and i'll throw some vegetables in there i'm gonna try that squash recipe yes charles let me know how you like it um the squash recipe i should mention too is really good for the kiddos um, Andrew is 15 months and he's been eating it since like not too long after he started solid foods. It's one of his most favorite things. It's very messy for a baby, but, um, this is something that if you're trying to get your family on this, um, idea of clean eating, cause it can be really hard if your kids are a little older and they're used to eating one way, this is a really great transition recipe. Um, you don't have to tell them it's spaghetti squash. Just be like, Hey kids, we're eating. We're eating pizza casserole tonight. Um, don't worry about what's in it. Um, and they'll eat it and they'll love it and then you can tell them. And then hopefully they won't get mad at you for tricking them. But it really is a great recipe to start introducing people to this idea of clean eating, focusing your meals around, making sure that you're getting enough vegetables, getting lean proteins, and getting your healthy fats. Because if you follow those rules, 
you're in good shape, I promise. Literally and, you know, just in, in mind. So thanks guys for watching. Um, have a great rest of your Sunday. Um, oh, let me know where you live too. It's really rainy and gross here in Chicago. So I want to know where, where you guys are from and um, just what you're doing today. I want to know about you. Um, and then, like I said, stay tuned to us. Um, if you're watching this live, give me some likes, some love, some comments. If you're not, give me some likes, some love, some comments. Um, I'm able to see them later and um, we'll love to get to know who's out there. So bye guys. Thanks a lot.